Hello, I'm back, Dr. K. K. Agarwal, President Heart Care Foundation of India, and you are watching Med Talks with Dr. K. K. Agarwal. This is 56th episode of this particular Med Talks, and in total, 692 session we are organizing on COVID. 56th in a row in the evening, 7 p.m. show. Let's have the headlines of the day. Government of India is now considering granting an emergency authorization for a COVID-19 vaccine, especially for the elderly and the people in high-risk workplaces. In post-COVID recovery, the Government of India advises constant monitoring of health and exercise in view of widely variety of symptoms reported lasting for months together. In a paper published in New England Journal of Medicine, authors said face masks could work like variolation to generate immunity and slow the spread of COVID-19 infection. Spain to begin phase two clinical trials of Johnson & Johnson COVID-19 vaccine on Monday. And Pfizer says American could get vaccine shot before year end. The vaccine is being developed in partnership with BioNTech and is one of the fourth front runner and is currently undergoing phase three trials. Let's go to the topic of the day. Ever since the Oxford vaccine trial was halted, transverse myelitis has come in the picture again. Everybody wants to know what is this transverse myelitis? How does it occur? Can be associated with vaccine? Can it be part of multiple sclerosis? Why was the trial halted? Can transverse myelitis occur in any other vaccine or not? To talk about this, I have with me a special guest with me, Professor Dr. V. Nagarajan, a senior consultant neurologist, neuropharmacologist, Chairman and Head Neurosciences Research and Translational Task Force ICMR, Professor Emeritus and Distinguished Professor and the recipient of prestigious national award with gold medal of API for recognized distinguished teacher in medicine, awarded unique one person in India. He is also the recipient of distinguished Nikol Award in Japan for his work on vascular dementia. Thank you, uh, Dr. Nagarajan, to be here with us. Uh, Thank you. We basically are going to talk more about transverse myelitis in general. And at the end, we will try to link it, whether it is linked to any vaccine or not. What is this transverse myelitis? Because we say a disease which is 1 to 8 million population, it occurs in India. Uh, what is What are the causes of transverse myelitis? And how will a common man come to know that he is suspecting from a transverse myelitis. Uh, I, I take you back to my student days where uh, we see that uh, a case comes to us of transverse myelitis, we are very comfortable because we can have a diagnosis from outside, almost from the window. I say this case should come to us because getting out of the examination is very easy. but. You know, the situation is uh, very grave with a patient. A patient uh, understands suddenly that he could not use both the lower limbs. Absolutely no movement, absolutely no sensation, and he could not pass urine, and urine gets uh, retended, and no bowel movements, etc. And it is a very horrible situation for the patient. Why it happens? 
because the entire part of the lower limb movement and upper limb movement are all controlled by a lower segment other than brain called spinal cord when the spinal cord gets affected in some process either by compression or by inflammation or by any trauma or whatever may be the reason it get deranged and the segments below the derangement becomes functionless and they cannot do any work it can be from any region from thoracic if it happened from cervical we call it as quadriplegia it happens below thoracic we call it as uh, hemiplegia paraplegia and transversalitis clinically results in a term called paraplegia that means both lower limbs becomes highly inactive uh, absolutely no sensation etc the causative pro problem for this could be anything either I, i since i explained to you that it can be from a trauma or it could be an infection or it could be an allergic manifestation and it could be so on and so forth the many causes or sometimes like a viral infection uh, viral myelitis was very common once upon a time uh, japanese encephalitis virus even conjunctival uh, acute conjunctival virus they all can affect many many affect like that and uh, viral transverse myelitis was uh, very common once but nowadays transverse myelitis has got a different transformation of thinking for doctors other than viral we want to know that whether this transverse myelitis is curable or not because once upon a time once transverse myelitis comes we give some drugs and the drugs often act or don't act about uh, 20 to 30% of people recover very well majority of them become paraplegic forever so it was something like polio you know because affecting both lower limbs it becomes almost a permanent disability and uh, now the concept becoming a little different now and uh, people think of different etiology for your uh, transverse myelitis and try to attack it as early as possible and make it very curable and uh, now the current practice of neurology nearly saves 60% of transverse myelitis back home at the end of 6th month or 7th month uh, so prospects of uh, management of transverse myelitis is much higher coming to the go sorry go ahead go ahead uh, coming to the issues once uh, to take a practical example of it when i was uh, when i went to kulu manali a dog bit me so bit me and uh, i was in a dilemma whether to have yeah anti rabies vaccine or immunoglobulin or not because to my knowledge many of the people who received vaccine they land in one of the complication of transverse myelitis so i was very 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 hesitant to have it but i know pretty well rabies is much more dangerous disease than transverse myelitis so i was bold enough i came to delhi i i had my injection at aims an immunoglobulin as well as the first dose of rabipur etc why i am telling this story is most of the transverse myelitis results from vaccination and uh, not most i say many of the transverse myelitis so one of the question we always ask that have you received any vaccination over the course of 6 months because 6 months is the latency time and uh, they do become uh, they do manifest ma transverse myelitis 6 months is too long a time and within a month i ask them uh, within a month they produce transverse myelitis the other causes being once upon a time tuberculosis transverse myelitis was very prominent now later on it became viral later on it became demyelinating transverse myelitis and this is becoming a very fairly very popular issue in india because the multiple sclerosis one of the demyelinating disorder which was very popular and very prominent in western countries has got a different uh, cap in south asian countries now we have a, a peculiar type of a disease which is a manifestation of multiple sclerosis 
which is called neuromyelitis optica, sudden loss of vision and paraplegia. So this is one of the things we manifest, we come across very commonly now. And we would like to know that are we dealing with neuromyelitis optica because it is also fairly controllable and curable problem. So we don't want to let down anybody, find out the causes for them and try to do whatever best for the patient because the medical segment is very active now that we don't leave anybody without any treatment as if in the olden days. So I want to come back to uh, uh, some basic facts that uh, I want to go, now go back to this Oxford vaccine and try to debate. Uh, as per the media reports, uh, this uh, this one patient during their phase two developed transversalitis. And during the phase two, there was a temporary halt of their vaccination program. And they said, and they ultimately said, unrelated to vaccine, multiple sclerosis. So their site now says that was related to multiple sclerosis, transverse myelitis. Now this patient, another patient now developed transverse myelitis. So in 30,000 phase one, phase two, phase three, in the 30,000 number, two transverse myelitis cases have come. And the very fact they have started the vaccination again, most likely they might have labeled it as a multiple sclerosis again. There is no other reason to uh, quickly within 48 hours a report coming that you go ahead with that. Now going back to the literature, chimpanzee do have paraplegia and tetraplegia similar to human uh, transverse myelitis. Sir, I have very few virus. Adenovirus is known to cause transverse myelitis. COVID-19 is known to cause COVID-19 uh, is known to cause uh, uh, transverse myelitis. So therefore, we are always looking for a vaccine which will not only give us a neutralizing antibodies, but should also prevent the immunological response, which is either interferon 1, interferon gamma response, or we have uh, the response which is basically NLRP response of the inflammation or TH1, TH2 response. Because if you do not prevent the inflammation, then the vaccine may give you antibodies, but it may not take away the arm of the inflammation in COVID-19. Therefore, I'm not talking about this vaccine. Many of the vaccines which are likely to come today may not prevent the inflammatory complications of the vaccine which are unrelated to antibody formation. Dr. Nagarajan. Uh, quite true, sir. Your concept is correct. But uh, uh, we, I discussed this matter with uh, uh, many vaccine producers, including what is called the National Institute of Pharma Education also. Why don't mm. you restrict yourself uh, to the extent of uh, not interference with other issues and give only protection or uh, protection only developing antibodies only towards the thing. I think the immune system is multifacing and you trigger one area, multiple areas gets triggered. I don't know what mechanism by which the other areas, probably uh, nanoparticles of the vaccine may help it in this way. That is, a, that is the answer they are giving. And not only that, now there is a concept, what is called synthetic vaccine. The synthetic vaccine may prevent uh, many issues like this, sir, because they are uh, focused towards only one area, because natural vaccines contains many aspects of stimulation. Uh, we do not know whether even sometimes they even stimulate TNF also. Many issues are coming up and uh, that is, un I, I don't think it is preventable. That is my view. So, and what about your feeling when you talk about synthetic, we are talking about uh, 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 recombinant RNA, that is Madonna. Exactly, recombinant. They are focused and we can, uh, we can modulate them to the level of uh, what we want. Probably the synthetic vaccine is uh, being thought of by many people, not only thought, it is on the process of uh, animal studies and uh, especially in National Institute of Pharma Education, where I am highly connected. 
and i am encouraging them to develop one and they are slowly moving against that and uh, dna i mean or the recombinant uh, rnas are coming up and then you have a lazard uh, management so that these sort of unwanted complications can be avoided regarding that oxford vaccine i also think very seriously that it could be a complication of multiple sclerosis because i don't know uh, even the concept of uh, principle of secrecy much of the informations are kept confidential and it is not available even to the medical field i don't know even uh, this amount of uh, issues you are able to get it and i am able to get it is out of uh, how very grave uh, digging of things and it becomes a principle of the fda not to let out the complications why what is the disease and why it has happened probably they should have invest they must have investigated him for multiple sclerosis much more like uh, magnetic resonance imaging and probably uh, those investigations by biochemical probably they came to a conclusion within two days or three days that it is unconnected to the vaccine but so, how they differentiated is really a, a very confidential and it is not let out as per the principle of trial uh, what about uh, is multiple sclerosis linked to vaccinations that's my next question uh, multiple sclerosis is also usually uh, a small percentage of people Uh, it, it, I, I contain logically it is a pro causa and non causa in fact an antecedent is being mistaken for a cause and there are no definite evidence that multiple sclerosis also preceded by a vaccination there are concepts in it but there is no truth in it i believe sir it is my personal view so i want to come back to the part of the vaccine uh, uh, because some of the audience is uh, Uh, uh this program is going live on also for the public because we are also live on facebook and uh, are you comfortable little bit in hindi uh not much no, not, not much not, okay. it's okay so i will whatever you are saying for, for the next 15 20 minutes i will later on summarize in hindi for the population uh everywhere and uh, so Take what it. i am basically talking about is say for example you have killed vaccine you have live attenuated vaccine this oxford vaccine was live attenuated russian vaccine is live attenuated the chinese vaccine is live attenuated the chinese and the russian vaccine is a human adenovirus and this one was a chimpanzee adenovirus so therefore all vaccines which are live attenuated we may see some problem in term of antigenicity am i right Uh, that is what i'm uh, hoping for a synthetic vaccine no yes i'm 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 only trying to summarize the whole thing is that all yeah. vaccines which are live attenuated may have some antigenic reaction so they may Possibly. be able to produce an antibodies but they may not prevent the antigenic reaction that's one second is what about a killed vaccine same thing inactivated killed, killed vaccine killed vaccine also even though there is no antigenic property uh, is very much, very much, antigenic properties is not totally abolished there and uh, phenolized vaccines are little better because phenolized vaccines uh, they actually denature the protein so once the protein is denatured the sort of antigenicity response is very less but uh, killed vaccine also has got uh, some problem so coming back to synthetic vaccines Uh, synthetic vaccines are can be a simple rna that means messenger rna they are using and uh, they are not using the dna they are not using the rna part but the messenger rna they are using and what about the spike protein can only the spike protein be genetically engineered uh, using a, a synthetic and then introduced as a vaccine pure so, spike protein uh i I think uh, we consulted with some of the scientists, and they say it is impossible to isolate the spike protein alone from that of the body protein, and uh, they find it very difficult out of it. And uh, that is information I received. Uh, more more than that, technical. Uh, I may not be a proper person to talk also, but they said like that. You know, only spike proteins 
cannot be and not only that if they produce a synthetic vaccine only for the spike proteins they are even suspecting the immunity will not be 100 percent okay so so basically uh, at this moment at the, in this segment of our show one thing is very clear that transverse myelitis is vaccine inducible in these two cases this may not have been there may have been a anecdotal cases of multiple sclerosis now we don't want to go back to what happened in the oxford vaccine now we want to come back to transverse myelitis a little bit more for general population but after a short break want to talk more on this आप देख रहे हैं मेट टॉक्स विद डॉक्टर के के अग्रवाल सेवन पी एम शो एवरी डे ऑन वेरियस डिजिटल मीडिया और मेरे साथ में है डॉक्टर नागराजन एंड वी आर टॉकिंग अबाउट ट्रांसफर्स मेलाइटिस ब्रेक से पहले डॉक्टर नागराजन ने बताया कि ट्रांसफर्स मेलाइटिस दस लाख लोगों में एक से आठ लोगों में होती है ट्रांसफर्स मेलाइटिस आपको दूर से दिखाई देगा क्योंकि पेशेंट व्हील चेयर में होगा अगर वो चल रहा है तो इसके अंदर में दिस इज नॉन ऑब्सट्रक्टिव कि आपकी मेरुदंड के अंदर में बिना ऑब्सट्रक्शन के वहाँ वायरस ने वैक्सीन ने इन्फ्लेमेशन ने इम्यूनोलॉजिकली डिसकनेक्ट कर दिया यानी कि स्पाइनल कोड मेरुदंड के दो हिस्से हो गए और वो आपस में एक दूसरे से डिसकनेक्ट हो गए दोनों पैर काम नहीं कर रहे पैरों में पावर जीरो हो गई पैरों में हाथ लगाने से पेन भी नहीं लग रहा पेशाब रुक गया मोशन अपने आप रुक गया उसका इनको हम बोलते हैं ट्रांसफर्स मेलाइटिस हमेशा ये लोग आपको या तो व्हील चेयर में मिलेंगे या फिर बेड पे मिलेंगे अगर वो बैठने लायक हैं तो व्हील चेयर पे और अगर उनके हाथ भी इन्वॉल्व हो गए जिसे हम क्वाड्री पैरसिस या क्वाड्री प्लेजिया बोलते हैं तब वो आपको बिस्तर पे लगेंगे इमेजिन अगर ऐसा किसी को है कैसे उसको फीलिंग होगी ट्रांसफर्स मेलाइटिस में इसी के बारे में वी वॉन्ट टू टॉक मोर अबाउट ट्रांसफर्स मेलाइटिस Now, if a patient has a suspected transverse myelitis, the first investigation obviously is an MRI. How will it help? <clears throat> It's a very great help, sir. Actually, it is a highly non-invasive, and uh, it put us in the groove immediately. What I'm trying, any case uh, comes to me as a transverse myelitis. Once upon a time, we go for lumbar puncture, but now the choice of investigation is an MRI. we would like to assess what segment is involved how many segments are involved because the severity and also little bit diagnostic also for example one segment is involved if two segments are involved or three segments are involved or vertically more segments are involved then it gives a clue to our diagnosis see for example i can say that if three segments or more than two segments are involved in mri as hyper intense lesion that means in mri it looks it t1 weighted images it looks uh, uh, white and more segments are involved and also in such cases immediately i go for a visual evoc potential and try to image the optic nerve also because these are the modalities so we take it immediately so that we are diagnosing a disease called neuromyelitis optica because a, a nearing about 30 to 20 to 30% of cases which present as transverse myelitis turns out to be in asian countries especially in japan it is very common thailand is very common malaysia is very malaysia i see many cases i go to malaysia very often 
and I see many cases of neuromyelitis optica and I think uh, it is a version of uh, an Asian version of uh, um, uh, the demyelinating disorder. I, mean, I don't name it exactly as... Uh, uh, it, it's a different form of uh, demyelinating disorder. And this, uh, we can't name it as multiple sclerosis. Probably I can say it's a variant of multiple sclerosis, uh, an Asian form of multiple sclerosis. And if three segments are vertically involved, the prognosis is a uh, little uh, poor, and we take them into task immediately for management, how best it can be. Even South Asians or Asians who live in abroad, like US and Lebanon and so many other countries, recently I happened to see, even in Delhi, I happened to see a case of a, a lieutenant uh, who suffer, who, who was one of the uh, secret ambassador in Lebanon. He developed multiple sclerosis in the form of neuromyelitis optica with paraplegia. So, because I do not know what is our genetic structure which is predisposing this issue. So if immediately we take them to MRI, magnetic resonance imaging, which is absolutely a non-invasive, non-invasive means we don't cause trauma to the patient, we don't cause pain to the patient. Probably the pain is only in the form of payment of money. Otherwise, there is no pain at all. And we just take them into consideration that are we dealing with, first of all, transverse myelitis. Because if you look at the hyper signals there, immediately if we see that transverse myelitis is there, uh, less than three segments, two segments, the prognosis is little better. Uh, involvement of more than three segments, the prognosis is not that better. But even then, we have our own uh, concepts of management to rescue them. And uh, if one segment is involved, I don't go for an optic nerve uh, involvement and we don't go for an optic nerve MRI. Uh, that is the procedure we adopt. And I go for a, a visual evoke potential where the latency is delayed. The latency is delayed means there is one latency called P100 and the P100 latency goes beyond the 100th limit. So therefore, showing a delayed conduction of optic nerve impulses uh, which gives a clue to us that we are dealing with a neuromyelitis optica and also clinical examination shows a pale disc. So these are all the clues we get it that we are dealing with a disease, a uh, tropical form of multiple sclerosis, what is called neuromyelitis optica. The second uh, uh, investigation very commonly we do is, in case we do it, absolutely normal uh, magnetic resonance imaging. We are not able to fix up certain things. There cannot be a situation like that. But even then, if one segment is involved, we go by other uh, investigations like CSF examination. So CSF examination may show a little raise in protein and uh, the lymphocytes counts are raised and go for even, in that case, we go for much more advanced investigations. So I I just want to ask one question is, how do we differentiate? Can we easily differentiate that this transverse myelitis is due to multiple sclerosis or not by MRI? Positively, sorry, more than, that is what I said already. If more than vertical three segments are involved, we call it as a serious form and is very likely to be due to multiple, multiple sclerosis. sclerosis variant. Very likely to be. So, so this, this is one clue we get it. So this, therefore, I'm saying is that in this particular case, most likely that might be the reason they have declared it as yeah, possible. We, we didn't get the proper information about that. We didn't okay. get the full information regarding that because the FDA doesn't disclose many things. You know? I know, but the information will still come back. And uh, this will be uh, the very fact they have allowed it. It has to be a multiple sclerosis and nothing else. <laughs> must be. Must be. Yeah. Otherwise, they may not have allowed it. How common is transverse? Which are the vaccines which are linked to transverse myelitis? Sir, it, it, uh, one important vaccine is once upon a time we were giving. A, I, I'll tell the, I'll tell by history. I think one is previously for rabies we are giving uh, the BPL vaccine. No? That is very dangerous, and we, the incidence of 
uh, vaccination, uh, 16 or for 13 injections given around the abdomen, nearing about 20 to 30 percent of transverse myelitis is to come due to uh, uh, antigenic response. And once that has gone, the chick embryo vaccines come, and much more than human vaccine has come for rabies. Uh, almost we don't get it. Uh, we don't get any case nowadays due to rabies. Rabies itself can present in the form of transverse myelitis. I've seen about more than about seven cases in my lifetime or over 45 years of experience. Seven cases of uh, rabies transverse myelitis. A typical dog bites and possibly no injection was given to them. And in spite of it, they developed uh, transverse myelitis. But out of which now this rabies vaccination is absolutely safe. And that too, human vaccination has so far has not even a single case of transverse myelitis. And uh, some people used to get afraid even whether they can give uh, uh, tetanus toxoid. There is one case reported in the world out of tetanus toxoid without any causal relationship. Yeah, they have taken toxoid and then they developed transverse myelitis. And uh, that, that, that report came about seven years ago and no proper investigation was done in it. It is a, just a case report I read, that's all. And uh, you, uh, other vaccine, like pneumococcal vaccine and uh, 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 Japanese encephalitis vaccine, I am following up about more than about 40 cases out of it, Japanese encephalitis, not even a single case of transverse myelitis. So the only risk, once upon a time when the BPL vaccine was given, the risk was high. Of late, the vaccination do not cause much a problem like the disease. So one thing is very clear uh, that vaccines induce so, so. transverse myelitis is not is known, but nowadays with the current vaccines, the problem is very small, and uh, because now that uh, discussion slightly has changed from transverse myelitis to possibly a multiple sclerosis, I would like to spend five minutes uh, on multiple sclerosis, how common it is. And how I forget about multiple sclerosis only in transverse myelitis. How will a clinical public should suspect multiple sclerosis or a GP should suspect multiple sclerosis? Sir, one of the very useful questions you have asked me, uh, the same question is asked by several people to me. Only thing I say that when somebody comes with retention of urine, that is the foremost. Uh, First sign they get it in all cases of paraplegia, uh, transverse myelitis. And second thing, some sort of numbness and tingling sensation. Very peculiar. Instead of total uh, absence of sensation, the initial thing is probably due to a dorsal column irritation or something. They develop some sort of uh, tingling sensation. And third thing is pain around the joints. This is the third important uh, clue I get it. Pain around all the joints in the lower limbs alone, not in the upper limb, peculiarly. And most of them happen to be diabetic. Some people mistake it for diabetic uh, neuropathy and try to give bumin beetle injection, etc. So the very important clue we get it, number one. Number two is level. The level you should ask them that where you get the sensation loss, where, from where you get this... Uh, uh, tingling sensation. And this important clue we get it, 99% of people are able to give you a mark, sir, from here I am not able to feel the sensation. From here I have the tingling sensation. A very important uh, patient information we get it. So I instruct in, I, when I go to GP or some form of association talk, I say that ask questions to the patient, spend more time with the patient so that you will not miss the diagnosis at all. Because the time lapse between this particular symptoms to the manifestation of the disease is hardly a week. And within a week, we'll be able to follow them well, and we can even prevent the uh, occurrence of myelitis. Number three is the big toe movement. The big toe movement becomes become slow. Uh, most of the people are diabetic, and people mistake it as a foot drop. And that is also very important. Other digits are normal power, and the big toe movement becomes a little slower. 
that is the dorsiflexion of the big toe becomes a little slower so as far as the patient is concerned retention of urine numbness tingling pain etc and as far as the practitioner is concerned uh, we, we, they should see that uh, intricate examination of the patient without neglecting one as far as the jugs are concerned the uh, plantar extensor is a foremost first sign a week ahead of the transverse myelitis so i have noticed it and they mistake it as a withdrawal but it is dorsiflexion the dorsiflexion uh, uh, the babinski sign gives a very good clue to the practitioner that you are dealing with the transverse myelitis and third important thing is little brisk jerk not a very violent increase in jerk because during inflammatory phase you get little brisk more inflammation you get absent jerk probably in the recovery period you get increased jerk so these are the manifestation of critical manifestation which is not in the book i am telling you the book describes all the things but these are all my practical experience which i want to share uh, to you and to the doctors so i want to ask the last question now quickly uh, in short treatment of transverse myelitis and number 2 treatment of multiple sclerosis basic principles uh, transverse myelitis due to viral cause straight away due to viral cause uh, steroid is a sheet anchor wherever wherever may be wherever may because we want to we want to save the neurons we want to save the tracks we want to save whatever arterial horn cell we want to save the entire because this is a tract lesion multiple sclerosis is a tract lesion but inflammatory changes kills the neurons also so both should be saved so steroid is a main sheet anchor and uh, methylprednisolone should be administered to all cases even if it is due to a demyelinating disorder even if it is due to a infective disorder even if it is due to traumatic disorder whatever may be the disorder steroid is a sheet anchor of the management suppose we are happen to see that we are, we are dealing with a, uh, a multiple sclerosis there are disease modifying agent and uh, uh, there are drugs which can be used now fingomod is very good uh, infusion once in a month if it is multiple sclerosis so sheet anchor is steroid so one thing we have learned today is ki transverse myelitis yani ke koi bhi aadmi aapko achanak mile पेशाब रुक गया है मोशन रुक गया है हाथ पैर काम नहीं कर रहे और उसको मूवमेंट भी नहीं है सेंसेशन भी नहीं है तो ट्रांसफर्स मलाइटे पर इमीडिएटली एमआरआई कराइए एमआरआई कराने से देखिए लीजन कितने सेगमेंट्स में है तीन दो तीन से ज़्यादा है दो तीन से ज़्यादा है आई चेकअप कराइए हो सकता है उसकी आँखों के अंदर में भी उसको लीजन हो और ऐसे पेशेंट्स को इमीजिएटली अगर इंटेंसिव मैनेजमेंट मिल जाए तो 60 से 70 प्रतिशत लोग ठीक हो सकते हैं अभी जहाँ तक वैक्सीन का सवाल है घबराने की ज़रूरत नहीं है आपने देखा होगा जब ये ट्रांसफर्स मैलाइटिस की बात हुई तो तुरंत हमारे स्वास्थ्य मंत्री जी ने एक बहुत बड़ा स्टेटमेंट दिया कि सबसे पहले वैक्सीन मैं लगवाऊँगा ताकि लोगों के मन में हिम्मत बटे कि ऐसे वैक्सीन से कोई भी ट्रांसफर्स मैलाइटिस जैसी बीमारी नहीं होने वाली but will this vaccine how successful they will be only the time will tell us let me thank uh, dr nagarajan to be here let me say namaste to him for a wonderful proposition you are a wonderful namaste. teacher people like you should continue putting your such tips on the youtube through people like us because once you put any of these tips in the youtube or in any social media amar ho jata it stays forever because any time it can be uh, taken out it becomes a part of your consciousness so all my viewers and dr nagarajan thank you very much for being here we'll be back yes, tomorrow sir. 7 pm with another show till that stay tuned namaskar 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 thank you